Hello again and welcome to the sixth test in the test sequence, which is also the second of the so-called power on tests. In BS 7671, regulation 612.10 requires the verification of the measures applied for additional protection is fulfilled by visual inspection and test. Where RCDs are required for additional protection, the effectiveness of automatic disconnection of supply by RCD shall be verified using suitable test equipment according to BSEN 61557-6 to confirm that the relevant requirements in Chapter 41 are met. Now, to test the operation and function of an RCD using the multifunction test instrument, there are a couple of options available. The Fluke multifunction test instrument being used in this demonstration has a facility to carry out an auto test, which if selected, carries out all the necessary RCD tripping tests in sequence. However, the inspector needs to reset the RCD after each tripping action has occurred. When complete, the inspector simply scrolls through the test results, which are stored within the test instrument before recording the measured values. Alternatively, individual tests can be carried out using the proprietary test lead with a molded BS1363 plug attachment. We connect this to the socket outlet nearest the distribution board. On the test instrument, select the RCD time option and set the function push button to the relevant residual current rating of the RCD to be tested. For a 30 milliamp RCD, obviously, this would be the 30 milliamp setting that is selected. We also need to select the size of test current to be passed, either half or times one or times five the residual operating current. We'll demonstrate a test of the 30 milliamp RCD providing additional protection to the socket outlets supplied from the single phase distribution board. And there's three stages. First, a test current of half the rated residual operating current is applied, which is 15 milliamps. And the RCD, which is 30 milliamps, should not operate. A test is then carried out at the rated residual operating current of 30 milliamps, and the device should operate within 300 milliseconds. This test is carried out twice with the test instrument settings for rising current, zero degrees, and for falling current, 180 degrees, switched between tests. The highest of the two test measurements obtained is recorded in the RCDI delta N column of the schedule of test results. A further test is carried out at five times the rated residual operating current, and the device should operate within 40 milliseconds. Again, the test is carried out twice with the test instrument settings for rising and falling currents selected. As previously, the higher of the two measurements is recorded in the RCD5 I delta N column of the schedule of test results. To complete testing of the RCD, regulation 612.13 requires functional testing to prove the effectiveness of the test facility incorporated in the device, which is carried out by simply switching the RCD on and pressing the device trip button, which should trip and operate the device. This should be recorded on the schedule of test results in the RCD test button operation column. And that's all for now on RCDs. So thank you for watching and I suggest you now watch the next video in the series on prospective fault current.